Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. And to everyone else who's watching this video, if you would like to help support my channel, you can visit eGuitarPlans.com. There's a link in the description below and purchase uh, one of many different types of guitar plans and tool plans. You can also visit my YouTube merch shelf, which is displayed below the description for this video. And not only can you get the same plans there, but you can also order t-shirts and that sort of thing. Uh, at any rate, whatever you purchase will help support this channel and it would be greatly appreciated. What I'm gonna talk about in this video is I want to address uh, a couple of comments that have come up recently in uh, other videos that I've made. And uh, here's one of those comments. And as you can see, it was written in Russian, so I had to copy that and then paste that into my Google Translator in order to translate what they were saying so that I could try to get an, uh, an idea of what they were talking about. And even after I made that translation, I'm still not 100% sure it's correct, so I don't know if I'm interpreting what they're asking correctly or what they're stating. At any rate, what they're talking about is neck relief. And as you know, when you string up a guitar and tune the strings, the strings are pulling on the headstock. It can be as much as, you know, a couple hundred pounds of pulling force. And what happens is because the neck is tapered and it gets thinner towards the headstock, that pulling force will lift the headstock up and that causes the neck to bow. Now, we have a truss rod that's installed in the neck at least on modern guitars, which allows you to control how much of the bow is allowed to remain when the guitar neck is under string tension. And a lot of people like to have a little bit of bow in the neck so that they get what is known as relief towards the middle of the neck. And the reason for that is when you pluck the strings, the strings are gonna vibrate between the bridge and the nut, and that vibration gradually increases towards the center. So the maximum amplitude of oscillation for the strings happens at the center of the neck. Now that's, that's rough because that, it depends on the gauge of the strings, but it's roughly in the center of the neck. So by having a little bit of relief there, we can accommodate that string vibration, but only in theory. That only really works on the open string and exactly where that vibration is happening is gonna be different with each string. So where that relief needs to be, it can't be adjusted to accommodate each specific string's maximum amplitude of oscillation. It's just not possible. We can only kind of roughly hope for the best as we adjust the truss rod. And the truss rod is normally going to affect that relief towards the center of the neck. But if a string's maximum amplitude of vibration happens elsewhere, it's not gonna matter. Plus, when you press the strings down to the first fret, the maximum amplitude of vibration for that string moves towards the bridge. And as you continue up the fretboard to the second, to the third, fourth, fifth, and so on, you're moving that maximum amplitude of vibration closer to the bridge. So it's no longer under where your um, uh, relief is at its maximum. So you're actually moving it towards the heel, which is higher than that position towards the center of the neck. So relief doesn't really work the way that you might think it does. Now, does that mean you shouldn't induce relief at all? No, there's no, you can certainly add relief just to play it safe. But just know that if you're starting to hear string buzz and you're wondering, well, what's going on? I know I've got relief. It's because that relief doesn't really work. I mean, it could also be because you've got a high fret that needs to be addressed. But counting on um, inducing relief isn't going to solve your fret buzzing problems by allowing the string's breathing room to vibrate because that changes with each fret where you press the string down. So I hope that makes sense and I hope, hope that I've addressed that. Uh, I know that in other videos I've seen where people talk about this, uh, they adhere uh, adamantly to that idea that the neck relief accommodates the uh, vibration of the strings 
but that's that's just not accurate and i think if you as long as you understand that that will better prepare you for handling whatever work needs to be done to eliminate the string buzz on the guitar that you're building or that you're working on so <laughs> Until the next episode, as always, um, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. If you're new to the channel, again, welcome. I hope that I've earned your subscription. You can click that subscribe button. And again, if you'd like to help support the channel, visit either eGuitarPlans.com or visit my merch shelf down below. And until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for future episodes.